dark matter. Scientists have come up with a term, dark matter, to describe the space between two things. So I'm here and there's a box down there. Now in between that, there's space, right? And that space, um, calculating it or accounting for it is dark matter. All right, so that's matter and then dark matter. So um, first, the first level of um, gaining access to something is labeling it, right? <laughs> labeling it and labeling it with the intent to say that we're going to be able to calculate what this is, you know. So whereas I can calculate what this is, I can calculate what it is between me and this, you know, between this this camera that I'm holding, the space, I can calculate it. In fact, in fact, if I can calculate it, then I can use it somehow. So what I'm getting to here is I saw a, a video the other day on how scientists currently are using DNA as data storage. And so this the reason for doing this is to get rid of large data centers because biology can store more data more efficiently, you know, and more securely than hardware, like mechanical hardware. So um, whereas, you know, this entire space, football field of data centers can be um, using it, using um, biology, using DNA to store that could be stored in like a little, a golf ball, right? So a golf ball can replace a football field of data storage. Um, and I'm just making a, that's the kind of analogy I remember seeing on the documentary. And it's currently being done. It's like, it's, this is not tech that they want to do. It's currently being done. It's just that right now it costs a lot. It's not cost effective to do it. But in time, you know, as costs go down, what will happen, you know, or what should happen is huge data centers will get replaced by um, DNA storage and using biology as a means of storage of data to the point where I could store data in this grass. I can store data in that bird, <laughs> right? So nature can be used as data storage. Now this links back to an idea which, that I have about um, everything being tracked, you know, at all, you know, in order to track everything, there needs to be a, a way to store and access that data efficiently and um, biology would be the most um, efficient way to do that. And then I said, no, what would be a step ahead of that? You know, what, what would be a step ahead of depending on this grass or that bird to store the data? How about storing data in dark matter? And I thought that what it, well, you know, the fact that I'm even thinking of it means it's, it's already true, you know, cause I can't think of something if it isn't already true and if it wasn't true, the fact that I imagined it created it somewhere in some space and time. So blank space, the space between me and that house over there can be calculated, you know, calculated and used to store data. And then that led me and you know what that led me to think of now, where is this currently existing? And I think of my mind, I think of my mind and my memory, right, to say that. If I assume that my mind and my ability to think isn't linked completely to me having a brain, right? If there's a there's a version of my mind that can that does exist without needing my brain. In fact, the whole idea of telepathic communication or um, communication that is like uh, beyond physical, right? Which means that perhaps my mind is like dark matter like there's a dark matter is linked to my mind and dark matter is where mem memories are stored or or um, and then my brain or my physical body is used to access that memory and it's not that the memory doesn't exist it's just that i over time i lose my ability or my need to access it right so things that i've forgotten um 
you know, it's not to say that that memory doesn't exist somewhere because it does, right? Or I shouldn't even say it does, but it could, right? And dark matter could be what that is, you know? And then my limit, the limit of me being able to remember things has to do with um, my, the de deterioration of my human physical body. So I could define it as the frequency of nothing is zero. The frequency of dark matter is zero, one. The frequency of being aware that dark matter and nothing exists is one, zero. And after that, everything goes from there. All I need is zero, nothing, zero, one, something, dark matter, the space that exists between everything. And then everything else comes after me being aware that those two things exist, you know. Then the binary code just goes from there, you know, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, you know, to create this, to create that. And if you dial it back, if you rewind back to zero, well, there can never be just zero because then I wouldn't be aware of it, right? I wouldn't be aware of just zero. The moment I'm aware that there is a zero, then I'm automatically in one zero. Because zero is nothing. Zero one is something, dark matter, about dark matter. And one zero is self. <laughs>